Hello, my name is Brent Johnson, and I'll be your presenter today, brought to you by the International Fire Stop Council's presentation on how to read a listing for fire resistive joint systems. Today, we're gonna walk through in detail a single fire stop listed system and try to break out each component to help you better understand as an inspector or reviewer or installer, what goes into these listings, where the information can be found, what some key terminology to remember is, and to help you kind of streamline your process in whatever role you may have. So today we selected a listing HWD0642. And as you're gonna see, we've taken some snapshots of the actual listing from the UL directory and put it up on the screen here and try to walk through it with you to give you some good ideas of what may be found on there. So one thing to remember is you're always gonna see a listing nomenclature. So in the UL guide, you're gonna be able to find what HWD0642 is. That means head of wall design dynamic of a joint less than or equal to two inches in the 642nd test of that type done. So a lot of systems out there pertain to this specific example, meaning if I'm inspecting or trying to install and select a system as a design professional, wherever my role may be, I have over 600 listings to pick from for a typical fire resistive joint at the head of wall. Good amount of work that could go into that. But our focus now is to say that's been properly selected and approved by the authority having jurisdiction. What's gonna go into reviewing these documents? What's found? So. We're gonna see a few different things. Number one, it's gonna show us right here that this listing was tested in accordance with UL 2079. You can check your local building code to verify that meets the requirements. Number two, you're gonna also see on the right a ULC. Well, Underwriters Laboratory takes the United States standards and the international or the Canadian standards and puts them together in one system card. So this listing is applicable to both standards. We're also seeing an assembly rating that we need to match the rating of our barrier with. We see a joint width. Uh, it's gonna give us a few different types of joints we can work with and some limitations. We see movement, which if you're working in a project with a structural engineer, defining how much movement may go on in our building and verifying that with the listed system are all steps and part of our review. And then we also see an L rating, an ambient room temperature and at 400 degrees, an elevated temperature. So uh, certain barriers called smoke barriers in your local jurisdiction may require an additional rating called the L rating. So all that's found at the top of our page. If we walk onto a specific project, we're trying to take a photo of that we have a metal fluted deck, we have a fireproofed I-beam or steel member, and we have a shaft wall uh, construction for an elevator shaft in this case uh, terminating to the bottom of that steel member. Sounds typical for the construction that uh, I work on on a daily basis, but might be new to some of you. Either way, all of these components I just told you about, one is the floor, two is the beam, three is the wall, and four is the fire stop, are all gonna relate back to what we see in the fire stop system. So our focus as a reviewer, installer, inspector is not just on the fire stop product. The product doesn't hold the rating, the listing does. So we have to walk through all these checks and balances. So most listings, if not all listings require or have, let me back up a second, all listings will have a photo for you. These drawings, not really a photo, but these drawings here are going to be a generic drawing of one condition of the installation. You are gonna have to read all the way through the listing to better understand all of its components uh, percentages of compression, thicknesses, and allowances. Uh, listings like this, as you can see, have multiple configurations from multiple fire stop products from the same manufacturer. So configuration A up here might have some sort of spray applied fire stop sealant with mineral wool, and configuration B down below may have some sort of prefabricated device uh, that we see out in the market today. So singular listing, multiple fire stop products. So now we see a whole bunch of words. Well, some of these listings are going to be anywhere from one to five, six pages long. We all wanna get our job done quickly and efficiently, but it is fire and life safety and we have to read through all of the listing. Not one part of the listing is more important than the other. So I wanna make sure we stress that, that we must match all components of the listing for it to work for our specific area. So back up onto what we find. 
What we're gonna see up top here, it talks about a specific type of floor assembly. So even though we're not the framing or concrete inspector on a project, we still need to verify that the assemblies we are working with are rated and in fact built as required by that specific listing. So in this case, this floor assembly is talking about a specific type of steel or metal deck. It even gives a specific hundreds of different UL systems to pick from for the floor assembly above. It talks about a minimum concrete thickness, which can vary widely throughout these listings. So we're verifying all these different steps. Many times your architectural drawings will have this floor or floor ceiling assembly on it earlier in the G sheets or general notes somewhere in that drawing, but it's important to identify that. Secondly, we now talk about the steel member. So we're seeing that, hey, a steel beam is acceptable. It's called out in your floor assembly. Many of us know that fireproofing or protection of steel members has their own test standard, own listing, or even their own special inspection. What you're finding now, what I want to point out is that the fire stop system will also talk about the fireproofing or protective measures used on that steel. The importance to remember here is we might not be the fire stop inspector, but the fire stop listing may have a more stringent design than that of a typical beam or structural member somewhere else in the project, meaning additional material of fireproofing and thicknesses may be required in our fire stop system that wasn't called out in our floor or beam or column protection. So something to think about is making sure they all work together. Additionally, specific products are called out here. So if I'm working with a GCP Applied Technologies MK10HB, well, I don't see that here. We wanna verify that, that fireproofing and fire stop are compatible with each other. We then get into the floor, wall, and ceiling runners. So we're gonna get in the overall floor construction. So we're gonna understand, as even though we're not the framing inspector, to verify the basics of our wall are matching what the framing inspector is also verifying per their floor and their wall assembly. So you're gonna see things like slotted track or J runners or C channel, different types of framing is going to be called out. You're gonna even see that the specific part number or brand of that slotted track in this case is called out. So verifying the legs of the track, the slots, they, where the screws are attached. Again, even though we're not a framing inspector, it's imperative to sit down with that individual, walk through this to make sure that matches what they're inspecting to because the wall listings tested to ASTM E119 or UL2063 do not test the joints or the movement of the joints. So now slots and slotted track and movement of the fire resistive joint are all now found in the fire stop listing tested in accordance with ASTM E1966 or UL2079. So that's why it's important to walk through all these different areas. It's gonna talk about the Z-clip. So again, how is this wall attached to the beam via Z-clip? How is it welded, shot pin? What's going on there? What's the on-center spacing? How do we fireproof that element also found back in our first section? We're also using CH studs, not a C stud or a CT stud. The specific type of stud and gypsum board is called out. So as you're seeing here, minimum one inch, or it calls out just exactly one inch board. So if I have two layers of five eighths on both sides, this listing would not be applicable. This is specific to a shaft wall. So you can see by reviewing this, the stud depth, the type of stud, the track at the head of wall and its, its uh, flanges and sizes are called out. The sheetrock gypsum type and thicknesses are also called out, very specific to the wall and floor construction. If we skip ahead a little bit further, we finally get into the fire stops. So we verified the wall construction, floor construction. We verified the protection of the steel that the wall is attached to. We verified the component attaching the wall to the beam with a Z-clip or lath or whatever it may be there. We verified the wall construction with our framing and wall design. Now, we've also verified potentially the movement, if our building has movement with a structural engineer to make sure all these components match with a structural design. We finally get back into the fire stop design. So this listing actually has two different configurations. And what I wanna point out is that means multiple products could be used. Uh, one of the key areas, if you have the opportunity as an inspector, you could do visual or destructive testing of fire stop and fire resistive joints. When mineral wool is used, it's always recommended to witness the installation of the mineral wool so you can verify the correct material was used, densities, 
Remember there could be four pound, six pound or eight pound density boards or mineral wool. There's even two and a half pound density mineral wool. So just because it's mineral wool doesn't mean it works for all conditions. If you look on configuration A, it says nominal four PCF mineral wool right here. So that means I have to use four PCF mineral wool. I use six, non-applicable because this says nominal, it doesn't say minimum. It even gives me a specific type of mineral wool. So if I had brand X and it's not listed here, that means that mineral wool is not applicable again to this listed system. There might be another one available to us. The key element that I'd like to point out as an inspector though, is we can verify the mineral wool compression, not only the type and density and manufacturer part number ahead of time, but we can also verify the compression, which is the key element of fire resistant joints when it's used. So mineral wool compression can be done standing on the floor, even with the contractor before they install it. If you go up there after the material is installed, there could be damage of the material coming out. It might not rebound 100%. There's a lot of variables that go wrong with destructive testing of mineral wool. So it's recommended to do it upfront at the time of installation so you can check all of these boxes off that we're seeing in the listed system. So we have a compression ratio and calculation which you will learn about from the International Fire Stop Council and the UL guide that will talk about that. We then have a fire stop material, minimum eighth inch wet, 16th of an inch dry. So one of the rare listings out there that gives you a wet and a dry. So if we're doing destructive sampling, calculations are already done for us. If we're doing visual, well, we might be able to visually inspect the, uh, the, ins the thickness of the fire stop spray with some sort of a wet film gauge or paint gauge to get that thickness at the time of the installation. Uh, it does give us overlaps again. Make note that typically when these elastomeric sprays that we see in this photo here are used over mineral wool, you usually get a half inch uh, thickness, uh, a half inch overlap onto surrounding substrates of that spray at the thicknesses called out here or as you're seeing here, a minimum of two inches of that fire stop spray onto fireproofing, meaning because fireproofing is more bumpy and has more areas of voids that it could go. So we're needing to see a larger two inch overlap of that fire stopping material on the fireproofing, or it might only be a half inch onto the sheetrock or framing, depending on the condition. And then specifically this part number. So this manufacturer might make a couple different types of spray, but again, this listing is only to spec seal AS200 elastomeric spray. Their competitor might have the same exact listing, different number, got to pull up that listing, get it reapproved if we're using a different product and do all the checks and balances we just walked through. Alternatively, you see on the right side, the same listed system, HWD0642, calls out an alternative product. So instead of mineral wool, this one calls out a Spec Seal Speed Flex Joint Profile, as we see on the bottom here. So not an exact installation photo, but instead of mineral wool used in the joint from the gypsum to the framing, we now have this preformed joint profile product that goes in or is a staple. So it gives us a separate set of rules that we must follow as far as how it's compressed, how often it's attached to the barrier. It looks like staples not greater than eight inches on center. So it gives me the installation requirements. It talks about at butt, uh, at butt joints or at seams, we need to have approximate three quarter inch uh, ship lapped at the end. So it tells us how to work the material into these different installations specific to the scenario we started with. And again, same fire stopping material. So looking back at our scope and review of the listed system, the fire stop material is really the last piece of the recipe here. We have a lot of steps building up to that. So we want to make sure we're treating them all equally. Some of them are gonna require additional work up front to work with other inspectors or other individuals in the project to get their information and work together on that. Uh, additionally, we wanna make sure that you understand that there's a lot more preformed or prefabricated fire stopping materials in the industry today. And that trend continues to grow. So if we're working on a project with a preformed fire resistant joint material, remember there is still a listed system that goes with those products. So as I'm showing the screen now, you might have some sort of intumescent tape or gasket or a plate angle, whatever it may be, applied in the track before you even get to the job site. Those products still have a listed system to the same test standards. So there's still an inspection step and process per your ASTM standard of special inspection to be followed there. Additionally, please remember, sometimes there's more than just that prefabricated product that is required. As you see here with shaft wall construction, which we've been focusing on with a CH stud, and this is our shaft liner, 
mineral wool was installed here within the top track of this fire resistive head of wall joint. That is a requirement of the listed system. If I look at the cut sheet or the product data or even the framing details here, I'm not going to see that. So we might have a prefabricated fire stop product that's a, a, a basic installation, but we still have a compression ratio, depth, and material type of the mineral that has to go inside the track now. So remember, not one fire stop product solves all of our problems. The products don't hold the rating and we still need to treat each step of the listed system equally. Uh, again, as stated earlier, as we see of mineral wool, the grains of the mineral wool also are imperative to understand their orientation for the listing, understanding what the uncompressed thickness is before it's installed in depths, and then be able to do your calculations if you're doing visual inspection of that to verify the compression ratios of those materials are being followed. Uh, so as a recap, this presentation was provided by the International Fire Stop Council. This is of a series of videos that talk about how to read listed systems of multiple types. So this one focused on fire resistive joint systems. We have penetration fire stop systems, perimeter fire barriers, as in curtain wall, and recessed box membrane protection. So think of outlet boxes and other elements like that. We welcome you to watch those videos and learn about them. Also, please remember there is a lot of information found at the International Fire Stop Council's website, firestop.org. Please take a look there. There is a free reading list and videos of lots of information there to help you. Again, my name is Brent Johnson with Firewise Consultants, and this video was provided by the International Fire Stop Council, and we thank you for your time.